the Galaxy S23 and Galaxy S23 Plus, meanwhile will be essentially identical to the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus respectively, with the exception of an upgraded CPU the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Additionally there are rumors that, select markets may also receive an Exynos 23000 SoC. The S23 will have a 6.1-inch display, while the S23 Plus will have a 6.6-inch display, assuming that the display sizes don't change. Most likely both phones will have Full HD Plus displays. They could also have a triple camera system with a 50MP main camera on the back, since these are only rumors I advise using the leaked details carefully. Samsung appears to be pushing for a January or February 2023 release, regardless of how the 2023 flagship series turns out. This means that the Galaxy S23 lineup won't be available for 4 to 5 months, which should give more time for leaks and rumors to surface. The Galaxy S23 Ultra seems like it'll be building on this in a few ways, most notably with the main camera somehow stuffed for the rumored 200 megapixels, and the traditional yearly chipset update for more performance and power efficiency. If the Galaxy S23 Ultra is changing as little as the rumors say, then we'll likely see a near-identical design to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the squared-off corners, a curved display, and individually embedded cameras on the back. That would also mean another embedded S Pen for your doodling needs. Now last week, there is an application made public by Galaxy Club, shows us that Samsung is actually working on face recognition system for its future Galaxy S and Z phones. The application discusses uses of two cameras placed under the display to create a better 3D model of the user's face, quite a bit like the Face ID but more like a different way of doing it. So according to the patent, the two other display cameras will be placed as far apart from each other as possible. So they will be able to take two different depth map of the user's face and combine them. The news came shortly after the Galaxy S23 Ultra received certification for 25 watt charging. We anticipate that this is also a Chinese model, which might still provide room for global models to handle faster charging rates, like 45 watt. For the testing, Samsung used a charger with the model number EPTA 800. Unfortunately, considering the Galaxy S22 Ultra did not come with a charger, it is pretty unlikely that the S23 Ultra will come with one. Of course, all information about the Galaxy S23 series is subject to change. We've heard that the S23 Ultra may be slightly longer and wider than the S22 Ultra, although only by hundreds of millimeters of you're unlikely to notice. So what are your thoughts on the upcoming S23 series, let me know it down in the comments section, and I'll see you guys in the next one, peace out.